We are in the Palestinian village of Deir Ghassana and we're going to do some olive picking right now. As you can you can hear the chickens. Hey, what's up, David? <laughs> There's a bunch of chickens back there causing a ruckus. But we're going to learn how to uh, pick olives the traditional Palestinian way here. Yep, that's right, I'm back in Palestine, this time to a little known historic village called Deir Ghassana. Now, if you enter this village, you'll witness the unspoiled beauty of the surrounding countryside. The village is built on a ridge in the hills north of Ramallah, where my dad is actually from, and you can get spectacular views across the coastal plain. Now, the old heart of town still has fortified mansions of the Ottoman nobility. They also have medieval Sufi sanctuaries and a museum of rural folklore. But today, we're here to take part in this simple yet ancient Palestinian practice of olive picking. This low budget kind of uh, fork and then they just comb through and they comb through and get the olives off just like this and the olives fall to the ground as they'll spend all day uh, for a few weeks during olive picking season uh, collecting these and sometimes they'll take it to the local olive press and make olive oil for it They'll sell it. They'll keep it in the family. It's just the air smells so fresh and clean and just very tranquil So uh, I'm really enjoying this and taking this all in About this? Yeah, we're what? having olives for lunch. We're having olives. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have olive uh, trees in your in your backyard in of your course, house? Of course. But you're more of a city guy, aren't you? Hasan? Still, you yeah. have to have. You have to. It's, it's essential to the diet. It's, it's identity. I've always been curious to actually try the black olives from the tree, so I'm gonna try it right now. Um. It's very bitter. <laughs> oh, it's really bitter. Don't I don't recommend you try the olives off the tree. It's not a good idea. <laughs> uh, in the oil, it tastes fantastic, but right off the tree, it's I I, I just don't recommend it. So part of the tradition when olive picking is to have some tea, and right now he's just lighting this up with some branches and they're going to collect some sage to make sage tea. Oh, it's really powerful. He's not kidding. So because it's the end of summer, they're kind of dried up on the tree and they're just good to go. Just a few leaves and that's it. Pick whatever's here, whether it's sage, mint, chamomile, and they'll make tea with it. So let's go hike over to the fire and make some shay or tea. So in Arabic, we call it maramiya tea. So we just added that and sometimes they'll combine it with black tea as well uh, so they combine black tea and sage together just getting that fire ready right now It's delicious. You taste the undertone of the sage with the black tea. And it's just it's just beautiful because you know they live off the land. They take use they learn about all the flora in school, right? At the university. They learn to differentiate between all of the plants and they utilize every part of it. Right? What did you learn? So you learned about didn't you learn in university about um about how to differentiate between the different herbs and yeah, we, we got to learn the basics about the herbs, the names of the tree, the origins, yeah. the various names of them. We, we need that kind of education in the States. Everybody's so disconnected from the land, they don't really know, you know. Yeah. It's beautiful. Cheers.
<laughs> While we shared a beautiful afternoon at the olive grove of a hospitable Palestinian family, sadly this year the attacks on Palestinian farmers have tripled. No one is immune to the attacks of Israeli settlers. Even Israeli human rights activists protecting the Palestinian farmers get attacked as well. Military and settler violence against Palestinians and their property is routine in the West Bank as trees are constantly uprooted. More than one million trees have been destroyed since 1967. Settlers also steal the harvest, which is a primary source of income for many families. They also commit tree arson, destroying lands and property, and attack journalists and activists that try to document their crimes. In 2018, there were 186 attacks alone, just on the olive harvest. However, there are stories of hope for the region, sometimes in the most unlikely places. At this year's Palestine Cultural Day in Foster City, California, one American is trying to make a difference in her own way to support these farmers. Her kiosk was filled with quality Palestinian olive oil, some of the best I've ever tasted, and I just had to know her story. So I'm here with Jenny and she started this amazing company called Harvest Peace, which is literally bringing Palestinian olive oil to the United States. We just got to try some. Everybody's going bonkers over it because the taste is so pretty, so amazing. It's unlike anything that you can eat here in the United States. How did you start this company? What what inspired you to start Harvest Peace? So my dad is from Ramallah, Ramallah and when I went back over there and I saw everything that was going on, it was just heartbreaking. And so I wanted a way to do something about it. And so it started with a passion to help. And so that's why every bottle sold, we try and put a plant in the ground, a tree, and to give back to the farmers that are going through all this injustice with their land. That's a beautiful thing. Have you had a lot of impediments in this business? Have you had a lot of challenges? Absolutely. Like yeah. Getting anything out of Palestine, it has to go through Israel. Um, that's, a, that's a problematic. Also, many people don't want to carry Palestinian products because of the potential political turmoil it will cause with their customers. Um, even if we're saying harvest peace and we accept everyone, and no matter what it is, there's going to be people that do not support Palestine. So that's been like the biggest hurdle. That's unfortunate. Now, if people want to support harvest peace and buy, like, look at these gorgeous bottles. I mean, this is really good quality. You can tell this is good quality olive oil. Uh, it's in a it's in a glass bottle. There's a harvest date. If people want to buy this, where do they go? So we have an online store. It's harvestpeace.com, and you can buy it online. Yeah. So order online. It gets shipped to their door. Yep. Little taste of Palestine at their door. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> well, thank you for doing this, and it's nice to know that you're going strong. Thank you for keeping going regardless of all the challenges. Absolutely. Yeah. Nice to meet you, Jenny. Buying fair trade goods from olive oil, crafts, and other foodstuffs is certainly a way one can support the plight of these farmers. Other organizations committed to helping these farms are CanaanPalestine.com, EqualExchange.coop, and Zaytun.org. I'll leave the links in the description box below. And a very special announcement. I am now accepting pre-orders for my brand new cookbook. This hardback book is full of meticulous recipes, family stories, and beautiful photos. Just go to feastinthemiddleeast.com and click on the cookbook tab. Order before December 20th, 2019 and get 10% off as my gift to you. Just use promo code FRIENDS10. Thank you for joining me and please subscribe to my channel for more Middle Eastern narratives and recipes you won't get anywhere else.